everyone! Today I'm going to show you how to use the tile command inside of Midjourney um, to create seamless, repeating fabric patterns. It's a simple trick and it can be really useful in a lot of different situations, whether you're working on fabric, wallpapers, or digital art. Before I start tiling, I like to start by generating an image that I'm happy with. So I just threw in a prompt that I had ready to go here. And cool, all right, that was kind of what I expected. So here we go. So, so what I found is that if you're, if you're trying to generate a tile and you start immediately by putting tile in your prompt, a lot of times it'll come out, it'll just look kind of bad and static. And I, I just don't like the look of it and I find it hard to edit later. So pick one of these that I like, kind of like this one here at the bottom. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually just gonna run a variation on that. So that's number three. And and I do that, all I do is I add dash dash tile on the end. And what that's going to do is it's going to generate four new options for me, all of which will be repeating patterns. So we'll see what it comes up with. Cool. All right, so now... So now you can see I've got some repeats. I've got some nice depth in this. It's got the fog, it's got the leaves, it's got the birds, everything's kind of nice. And you won't really know which one of these you're gonna like or if you wanna do any further work to these, but so I like this one here. Another tip is don't just stick to square aspect ratio. So another thing that can be really nice is if you vary your patterns so that they have a different aspect ratio. So for instance, I could run this and I could run it with AR, let's do 916 uh, or like 629. What I found is sometimes those non square aspect ratios just they just look better when you tile them. So, what, what I'll do is I'll show you how to preview what it will actually look like as a tile pattern next. Cool. All right. So, we've got some options here too. I like this one with the branches coming through. So, I'm going to upscale that one. I'm going to save this. Okay, so I went ahead and saved the 916 and the square one. And then the next thing we're going to do is use this uh, helpful tool called the Seamless Texture Checker. Seamless Texture Checker. Seamless Texture Checker. Yeah, I got this. So here is the Seamless Texture Checker. And it is, uh, all you have to do is you can go ahead and hit File. And then you are going to find your image. So here's our first one. This is the one that was the 916 ratio. So it's, you know, and you can, until you see, until you see one of these actually like tiled, you don't always know if they're going to look good or not. So for instance, on this one, it's like technically is this seamless? Yes. But there's something like a little bit, or I guess this is a tree. It's weird. It looks a little strange there. So there's just something a little odd about it, but it's, you know, there, you have to experiment a little bit and just kind of find ones that are actually good. And then the nice thing about this tool is you can actually increase and decrease the size and you can download a, a tiled version of it. So if you want to download the final, if you want to download an actual tiled version of this, it can be really nice for sites like Blue Dobo where the tiler doesn't work that well. So like, for instance, I've noticed on that particular site that sometimes your patterns will get white lines in them between tiles. So that, that can be nice. It's, it's a handy little feature and yeah, you can do this in Photoshop. You can do this other ways, but I, I find this little web tool to be really handy. Okay. And this is our square one. So this one actually, I, I like this one. I think it has a nice, has kind of a nice pattern, sort of a nice rhythm to it. If you zoom out too far on these, they look kind of terrible, but you know, it, it can be a really handy thing. I mean, and if you do, I, I kind of like using textures and patterns that have a lot of depth to them, but you can obviously create much more like normal standard fabric patterns as well. All right. And now you've got everything you need to create beautiful seamless patterns in Midjourney. Uh, go ahead and experiment with it. I'd love to know what you create in the comments uh, and don't forget to like and follow for more creative tips. See you next time.